Now, we are familiar with credit management functions, credit organization. We know uh, what are the reasons behind failure. We are familiar with different terminologies like poor quality loans, loan losses. The question is, who are really responsible for evaluating loan proposal, appraising loan proposal, sanctioning loan, monitoring loan, controlling loan? What are the divisions? What are the departments? So since we are the student of credit management, we need to know about operations of credit management as well. So one of the departments uh, is known as loan division. Under loan division, you will find so many other departments working for dealing with the credit. Among these departments, one is called credit department. Remember, now I can't change the terminologies used here because credit department functions are fixed. Since the functions are fixed, I can change their functions as per my opinion. So you have to follow me or you have to follow textual presentation. So what are this? The primary function of credit department is to evaluate the credit ordinance. Credit ordinance means whether the man, the person, the individual, the company is capable enough to return the debt amount or capable enough to pay the debt. So that's why the first mission function of the credit department is to evaluate the credit ordinance and debt payment capacity of present loan customers and new loan applicants. That is the point. Is this related with only existing customers or new customers? Both, both credit department deals with both existing loan customers and also new applicants. Another function of credit department is to train its people, train its human resources, apply talent management activities to develop loan offices from recruitment to selection, selection to training, training to rewarding, rewarding to retaining. So, so talent acquisition, talent retaining, talent training, talent rewarding, all these activities related to credit department staff should be controlled, monitored by credit department. So this department is also responsible to help their staff to grow through training, coaching, workshops, seminars, and other activities. The department is also responsible for loan or review. Once loan is all right, once papers are there, information available, you, are, you, you have enough information to satisfy staff, satisfy credit officers, your job is done. No, no, not like that. Every time, every week, every month, every quarter, uh, within the time frame, regular loan review is also the function of credit department. This department is also responsible for collecting first due loans. If there is due, first due, so this department is also responsible to collect all those due. Now we are using the word securities or collateral so to, to evaluate collateral security. Uh, there is another department is known as collateral and note department. Security 
So who will evaluate the value of that land and building? Machineries. So another department. The, the people who work with this department, uh, the employees are working with this department, they are really uh, are trained to value assets, to value liabilities, to value resources. And many cases, we are making mistake here. Our officers are making mistake here. They are not properly valuing land and building and machineries. Sometimes they're overvalued land building and machineries. And these way, we are making fault. We are developing poor quality loans. You see how important collateral department? So they also perform monitoring. They also perform crediting of payments received on outstanding notes. Some committees are also involved with credit management system, with credit management activities. And these are loan committees. Three committees we have, officers loan committee, directors loan committee, and a special assets committee. Officers loan committee uh, is, a, is, a, is a committee uh, who starts loan processing and then moves to director's loan committee for final decision. A special assets committee evaluate assets and liabilities values of clients of customers. Now we will specify duties and responsibilities of various department. These committee's duties are, the first one, review major new loans. Then, review major loan renewals and ascertain the reasons for the renewal. So see that new loans, yes, that should be reviewed. And if your loan requires renewals for some reasons, what I have already mentioned in my previous discussion, that sometimes re renewals will be the part of motivation. Renewals will be the part of time demand or requirement for the bank, both for the bank and for the customers. So who will review these renewals proposal? That is also by, the, by these committees. Review delinquent loans and determine the cause of delinquency. Delinquency means bad loans, delinquent. So find out, review delinquent loans to find out the reasons behind this. And if you find out the reasons behind this, then the bank will be careful in future and can stop delinquency. Bank has its own business policy. I have mentioned the points. Can you remember mission, vision, goals, objectives, strategies? Bank has credit management policy. So bank has overall bank policy, bank has credit management policy. So who will ensure that your loan comply with bank policies? Loan comply with credit policies? So that is also the duties of these committee when they review they reviewed any loan proposal, any new loans or loan renewals with their existing policy, existing credit policy to find out whether these loan proposal really comply the standard of the bank. These committees are also checked, cross-checked, 
all the documents submitted to ensure that full documentation of loans have completed. Moreover, it ensures these committees they're responsible to make sure that consistency exists in the treatment of loan customers. You cannot follow some standards for X and some standards for Y. You have to be consistent. So who, who are responsible for this? They are committee members. It's their responsibility to ensure consistency in the treatment of loan customers. How do they work? Normally, officers committee meet frequently. In large organization, they meet daily. In small banks, they meet weekly. After taking some decisions, reviewing, after reviewing their decisions, forwarded to another committee, that is the director's loan committee. So director's loan committee reviews again, all those major loans approved by the officer's committee, and they evaluate finally for the last time to take final decision. Loan approval process requires three elements. One is delegation of authority. A bank manager cannot do everything. He or she should be democratic. He or she should know how to delegate authority to the subordinates. If he or she only delegate responsibilities, but not authorities, the whole review process will not be a successful one. So that's why they must know how to delegate of authority. Number two, uniformity. They should have uniform presentation format and standard. Each and every department will follow prescribed format and standard. And finally, actual loan decisions will be taken. Some bank that follow centralized decision-making system, but now it is that is very old fashioned. And some bank that follow decentralization process. But because of the digitalization, because of the social media's performance, because of the highly developed communication system, now it is many large organizations are also following centralized decision-making system. Why? Because communication is so simple. Within seconds, you can share anything. Uh, though that is the oldest one, but it's returning again. Now see the loan approval process. What kind of information you need to evaluate? The first one, description of the client's business and position in its market and industry. So you see that in each market and industry, their performance in the market, performance in the industry, what kind of company it is. It is a good company controlling 5%, 10%, 20%, 30% market share. What's the position in the industry? If under the industry, there are 100 companies working in Bangladesh, then what's the position of the company? It's our 100 out of 100 or it's a company of top 10, top 20, top 30. That should be properly identified to offer a very good quality loan. How many cases we are evaluating this? Number two, assessment of management. 
Yes, they are. This is a very good company. You have heard, especially the documentation is really good. But can you rely only on documentation? Or you need to see who are working there, who are the member of the management team. They are honest. They have goodwill. They are respectable person in the society. Or some other kinds. At the time of evaluating proposal of the loan, it is important to evaluate the purpose of the loan request. So purpose of the loan request should be evaluated properly. Number four, repayment schedule too short repayment schedule is not good too long what do you think too long is also not good why because too short within shorter period of time if a client need to repay the loan amount the installment will be very high and that will be a burden and if it's too long 30 40 50 years then the expenditure cost will be very high. So as a credit management expert analyst, you should spend some time to find out a suitable repayment schedule. Also, we need to evaluate source of repayment. We need to identify properly after getting the loan, how the client will repay the loan amount. It is from his existing business or it's from new business and if it's from new business then it's risky because new business will start then will establish generate income after deducting expenditure whether uh, the company will have uh, enough extra excess money to repair the loan amount with profit or interest that should be evaluated not only sources of repayment, but also secondary sources of repayment should be considered. The collateral, the securities, that should be valued, evaluated properly to minimize risk. What is the right value of the land? What is the right value of the machineries building? That is the collateral value should be evaluated. And also the guarantors, who are the guarantors? They're the respectable person in the society. They are financially solvent. They are known to everybody. We have some cases where nobody knows guarantors. Bank did not evaluate it, the qualities of the guarantors, the personalities of the guarantors, the economic power of the guarantors. Number six. Uh, that is uh, discussed earlier, history of first borrowing with the bank. What it is called? History of first borrowing with the bank? We discussed in our previous class. Credit history. We spent time on this. Can you remember credit history? Yes, sir. So history of past borrowing with the bank should be considered. Now you see that monitoring steps. What should be the right monitoring steps? How do you go for monitoring, including timing of submission of financial statements? You see that monitoring is so important. You may ask financial reports every month. You may ask financial report every quarter. If you ask financial report after 12 months, that is, that is long time. So once you sanction a loan to any company, any uh, uh, individual, you need to follow monitoring. You need to follow all the steps of monitoring. 
or you must design monitoring steps where you have to include timing of submission of financial statements. Besides these, sponsoring officers comments. Sponsoring officers comments. One officer from your bank is the sponsor. So what is his comments? And whether all the information collected from the client and the comments really consistent with policy that should be evaluated. How do you take loan decision? Yes, if you follow the loan approval process, the officers committee will evaluate the information first and with their comments, their decision, they will forward it to the uh, director's committee. And after evaluating, the director's committee will finalize uh, whether the loan can be delivered or not. You must have a very good loan policy. We are talking about loan policy again and again and again, but where is loan policy or what kind of policies are known as loan policy? From our discussion, we can understand some key points we have to remember in your loan policy. One is priorities. What sectors will get priority? What factories will get priority? What manufacturing plants will get priority? What kind of small and medium enterprises will get priorities? Second point, procedure. What procedures your bank is going to follow to provide good quality loans to minimize risk, to minimize loan losses, and to ensure superior profitability. Means, means methods. Loan policy must explain properly the methods of monitoring lending activity so that no confusion arise in future. So you can write loan policy because you're the right person to write loan policies. And that's why what writing, what, what sequence you have to follow. It's introduction, then objectives of the loan policy, then a strategies related to loan or lending. You must explain very properly lending authorities and approvals process so that no anomalies arise in future and properly you have to write very properly all credit standards so that you can be consistent your officers will be consistent can be consistent to follow credit standard now a page in front of you and it's for you guys to read that is called 